Uh, isn't it great to be in God's house and to know the presence of God? What a fantastic environment and atmosphere we're in this morning. Um, I was fired up before I got here this morning. I was just listening to the worship songs on, on uh, YouTube this morning. And, um, listen, and if you haven't got the Maverick City album, get it and stick it on your CD player. Uh, if you're old like me on your tape player, whatever you've got, stick it on it and bless yourselves because it's a fantastic album and it will just set you up for church every Sunday morning. Let's read some scriptures. The readings are a little bit longer than usual this morning, but I needed to put it in context what we're sharing about today. So let's read from 1 Kings 19. And the Lord said to him, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hezael king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu, son of Nimsa, king over Israel, and anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Meloah, to succeed you as prophet. And we know the Lord will bless his word. We'll leave it there and we'll run to the next scripture. For time's sake, thank you, 2 Kings chapter 2. Great. And when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out and Elisha asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied. So be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, so be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, And as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I can do for you before I'm taken from you. Let me inherit the double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a very difficult thing, Elijah said, Yet if you see me when I'm taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses appeared and separated the two of them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. And we know God will bless his word. I want to talk to you for a little time today on the theme of determine your distance. Determine your distance. Two names dominated this time in God's people, Israel's history. Two men, Elijah and Elisha. These men were giants in the leading of God's people and in the nation. But what's interesting to note is that Elisha does not get nearly as much press as his forerunner, Elijah. Elisha seems to dwell in the shadow of Elijah, whom he's going to succeed. There's a lot more told us about Elijah's life and Elijah's ministry. And yet in 1 Kings 19.16, we're told, and we read it this morning, God specifically tells Elijah, anoint Elisha. We're told little or nothing about this, Elisha, and yet God has singled him out. God has picked him out. God says to Elijah, he's going to be your replacement. He's going to fill your shoes. What's also interesting to note is there was a whole bunch of other well-known and prominent prophets in Israel at that time, but God didn't send Elijah to any of them who were much closer, who were much more convenient, who were much more experienced than Elisha. No, God sends Elijah to a farmer plowing in a field somewhere that he didn't even know at that time. And Elijah eventually had to walk over 300 miles to get to where Elisha was. Now, 300 miles was a long way in those days. Why would God do that? Why did God pick Elisha to serve him? Well, I want to look at a couple of reasons this morning why it was important that God chose Elisha. Here's the first one. Elisha was determined to follow God. He was determined to follow God. Elisha was a man who was sold out for God. Elisha was God's man long before Elijah ever came to call him or tell him he was God's man. Now think about that. Remember that. It's important. In 1 Kings 19, God told Elijah, I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, 
all those knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth has not kissed him. And out of those 7,000 people, which is not a lot of people in a nation of that size, but out of those 7,000, the small minority, one of them was Elisha. He didn't realize it at that time, but he was being singled out and picked as God's man to do God's work. Long before Elisha had any inkling of his future call in the service of God, long before Elisha knew he was going to call to succeed Elijah and be a great prophet, in fact, be even a greater prophet than Elijah, he already was determined to serve his God. He'd made up his mind, I will follow Jesus, no turning back. He was a man with a made-up mind. Elisha stood for God. Now, notice when he stood for God, because this is significant. He stood for God when everybody else was bowing to Baal. When everybody else had chosen to bow down to heathen idols, he took his decision to stand for God. He was determined to follow his Lord. It was a dangerous, courageous decision for Elisha to make because many were being killed because they refused to bow down and go with the flow of society. And here's the question. Have you and I determined to follow God? Have we made up our mind no turning back no matter what in a society that's going all the way it possibly can, from the church and from the things of God, God's looking for Elisha. He's looking for people who are determined to follow him and not give up. Could you or I be God's man or woman in our culture today? You know, in many places in the world today, it's illegal to be a Christian. Did you know that? It's illegal to be a Christian. And whilst we have religious liberty, even in our own country, it's becoming increasingly difficult to take a stand for the things of God in a culture of secularism and humanism. But that's exactly what Elisha did. He determined to follow God no matter what. Even when it was illegal to do so, he still made up his mind to follow God. His determination to follow his God is also displayed in the sacrifices that he was willing to make. You know, we talked recently about this on one of our Tribe Tuesday studies, about the cost of discipleship and the cost that those men and women in the New Testament had made to follow Christ. But here we see the same spirit in Elisha. He was willing to give up anything in his determination to follow God. Look, we're told as a farmer, he even burned his oxen and ply. Hmm? He walked away from it. He actually destroyed it to make sure he couldn't go back to it. The point is this, that a lot of time and money was tied up in that sacrifice. He was a farmer. That was his livelihood. And yet so strong was the call, follow me from the God he loved and served, he burnt it to make sure he couldn't turn back. Listen to 2 Chronicles 16, 9. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Come on, if you're going to be loyal to him this morning, God's with you. God will go on the journey with you. God is looking for somebody who's sold out for him, who's determined, like Elisha was, to keep going and not look back. God is looking for people in this generation who want to come on, get it, folks, who burn their bridges with the past. Whatever that past might be, maybe it was a great past full of comfort and security, and maybe you need to burn those bridges and step out in faith in God. Maybe it was a bad past that haunts you and steals your joy, and you think you've failed. God wants you to burn those bridges and be determined to keep on going and follow him. Get rid of anything that would sidetrack them from serving God. That was the stuff that Elisha was made of, and that's what he calls us to do and be in this generation, to keep going forward with God. In other words, do whatever we have to do to be what we want to be, more importantly, what God wants us to be. Be the man and woman that God needs us to be. Look, we sing it in our worship songs, and I've already quoted it this morning. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. When we sing this song, we're declaring that we're sold out for God, somebody who will not give up, who'll be determined to keep on going. And Elisha's determination is further shown by the servant heart and attitude that he have. Listen to 1 Kings 19, 21 again. It says, He took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen. So he sacrificed them. He got rid of the stuff that was holding him back. But then he did something fantastic with it. Then he says, Then he gave it to the people and they had a feast. Wow, isn't that brilliant? So he took the stuff that he was getting rid of, and not only did he get rid of it in the sense that it didn't want him to hold himself back, but what was left, the meat, the good portions, the stuff that could feed his people, and his servant heart and attitude, he said, I'll bless the people as well. 
Come on, that's fantastic. What a lesson. It says, then he arose, went after Elijah, and assisted him. He sacrificed his oxen to God, but then he invited everybody over to get blessed as well at the feast. That's, fun. That's a man who loves God and loves others. He not only loved his God, but he had a heart to minister to others. And God's still looking for people who are determined, no matter what, to keep on serving God and keep on being different in their attitude to others. Jesus taught his disciples, whoever would be great among you must be your servant. Now, the beauty here at House of Worship is we have a lot of people like Elisha. I, I, listen, I don't know, maybe it's not the right word, but people will understand, and anybody listening online uh, uh, when they watch this back on YouTube, please, I mean it in the most wonderful possible sense. I'm proud to be pastor of a church where I have Elisha's in it. People who love God and people who love each other. Come on, never lose that spirit, church. We've got to maintain that to reach our community, to change our nation, to change hearts and lives. But if you are listening today, either in this building or online sometime later, here's the question we need to ask. Are we being used by God? Are we determined to go with God? Have we made that sacrifice that allows God to make a difference in our lives that we can take our stand and go forward in God? Elisha determined to follow God. But here's the second thing, and here's the main point of this study this morning, and I hope you grasp this, and it blesses you, and it challenges you. He determined his distance. He determined his distance. We're looking at the life of a man who was a great prophet for God, committed to God, sold out for God. God had selected him to be Elijah's replacement because Elijah was going. He was about to be taken up in a fiery chariot, and everybody was waiting for it. Everybody knew it was going to happen. He was going to go with God. And according to the text we read, Elijah began his journey in Gilgal, and then he went to Bethel, and then he went to Jericho, and finally he went to the River Jordan to be caught up with God. And every time he had to move, you read it this morning, he told Elisha, wait here, I have something else to do. And Elijah, Elijah, as he moved on, got the same message from Elisha every time. Wherever you're going, I'm going. You're not going to get rid of me. I'm staying as close to you as I can possibly get. I'm never, never going to let you push me away. Here's the lesson. Elisha was willing to go as far as he needed to stay in the presence of God. I'll say that again. Elisha was prepared to go as far as he needed to stay close to God. Look, we read it this morning again. My attention was caught by the fact that there were many other prophets in training who had a desire for the prophetical ministry, who wanted to serve God. The Bible calls them the sons of the prophets. But note, none of these wanted to tag along every time Elijah left and went somewhere else. Hmm? None of them seemed too interested in actually getting to the point and the place where they'd see the fiery chariot and Elijah being taken up. In fact, 2 Kings 2 7 says, 50 men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them. Now, oh, come on. They were nosy enough to want to see what was going on. They were interested enough to stand at a distance and say, Ooh, that looks good. But they didn't want to get involved too much, they didn't want to pay the price to stay close. What was going on with these guys? They didn't want to go far enough to stay close to God. Come on. They weren't prepared to get that close. And when it comes to following God, sadly, that's what happens to many in Christendom today. They don't want to get too close to Jesus. Oh, surely you're joking, Pastor. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Look at churches all over our land today, and there's seats that should be full, but people just can't be bothered. It's a lovely day. I'll go to the beach. I'm tired this morning. I had a hard day in work yesterday, and I, I'll just stay an extra hour in bed. Now, come on, folks. Let's get real about it. How far are we willing to go to stay close to Jesus? Ah, oh, but, but, Pastor, like, it's, it's, my, my family today are, are having a birthday celebration, and how far do you want to go with Jesus? Tell him he'll be down later after you've been to church. 
Come on, let's get real about faith. And I know I'm preaching to the converted this morning. I know I'm pre preaching to faithful people this morning. But take this message out with you and share it with others. How far are we prepared to go to get close and stay close to Jesus? The great T.F. Tenney, and I had the privilege of spending some time with this man of God, fantastic preacher. If you ever see anything on YouTube or anywhere preached by T.F. Tenney, tune in and watch it. Fabulous man of God. And I had the privilege of spending time with him on a few occasions. And here's what he said. <laughs> Boy, he, he had summed up. Jesus fed 5,000, but only 500 followed him after lunch. He had 12 disciples, but only three went further into the garden with him. And only one stood with him at the cross. You see, the closer you get to the cross, the smaller the crowd becomes. The closer you want to get to Jesus, the smaller the crowd becomes. The closer and determined you get to serve your God, smaller the crowd becomes. You know, the church of Jesus Christ is worldwide, but I have to be honest with you, folks. Jesus says he's coming back for a remnant. A remnant. It's a glorious church. It's a fabulous church. It's a successful church. It's a vibrant church. It's a victorious church. But there's a lot of people, sadly, might not be in it who think they're in it. How determined are we to get close to Jesus? To get close to Jesus. Religion isn't enough. It's about that personal, intimate closeness with our Savior and our Lord. Those prophets stood back at a distance because they didn't want to get too close. We need to determine our distance from Jesus. By contrast, Elisha wasn't afraid of what God wanted from him. He got as close as he could to Elijah, refused to leave Elijah. Why? Because he knew Elijah carried with him the presence of God, and he wanted to get as close as he could. Judy's wonderful. Oh, come on. Judy is wonderful. It's great to be dutiful in what you do. Jesus needs more than Judy. How do I know? Listen to the words in Luke 17. When you have done everything you were told to do, you should say, we are still unworthy servants. We've only done our duty. Hmm? Judy's great, but Jesus needs more. We should need more. Don't be satisfied with just getting by in our faith. Keep on striving to stay closer to Jesus. Paul wrote in Corinthians 3, sorry, 1 Corinthians 3, according to the grace of God given to me like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds on it. Paul is saying, don't just get by in your faith. Do something with it. Be something in your faith. Stay close to Jesus. Elisha wanted all he could get, wanted to stay as close to God as he could, and he wasn't afraid to do it. And you know what? And he wasn't afraid to ask for it. Hmm? 2 Kings 2, when they had crossed the Jordan on dry ground, Elijah says to Elisha, what do you want before I'm taken from you? What do you need from me? And Elisha says, Double what you've got. <laughs> come on. Double. Oh, come on. Are you afraid to ask God this morning? Don't be afraid to ask God for more than you've got because God wants to give it to you. Our problem is do we actually want it? Double what you've got. What's all that about? Well, a little history lesson here. Elisha was asking for what was known in that time and in that nation and among those people is the right of the firstborn. Deuteronomy 21, 17 says, for a father to give the right of the firstborn for him was the giving of a double portion. In other words, the father had to give the son double what he had. Elisha was asking to be treated like the firstborn of Elijah. Ah, oh, come on. He didn't want to be number two, son or number two follower, he says, I want the double portion. I want to be number one. He wanted to be the best follower of God that he could. He wanted to be not just like Elijah. He wanted to be more than Elijah for the service of God. And you know what he did? He did. He was bold enough to say to God, I want to be the firstborn. I want to be the son. I want to be the one who inherits the double portion. And he did. 
And you see, the blessing didn't stop when Elijah left. In fact, it got better. In Scripture, Elijah is recorded doing 14 miracles, but in contrast, Elisha did 28 miracles. He got the double portion. How about that? How about that? But Elisha couldn't have done it if he hadn't been determined to stay as close to God as possible. He determined his distance, and he said, just like I wouldn't walk away from Elijah, I'm not walking away from God. Just like I stuck as close to Elijah as I could, no matter where he went, no matter where you take me, God, I'm staying close to you. That's the kind of mindset Jesus talked about when he said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled, Matthew 5, 6. That's the kind of expectation that following Jesus needs to create in us, that we should not just be satisfied by getting by in our faith or just doing the duty in our faith, but looking for the double portion. And we can have it. We sang it this morning, pour your spirit out. You know what? It might be a small church numerically. It might be just a little handful of people in the middle of a wee country, in the middle of nowhere that nobody seems to know too much about. But you know what? Just like that farmer who was plowing his field, we can get the double portion of the Spirit of God if we're determining to stay close. Determining to stay close. I wouldn't be as boastful or as high-minded to think that revival in Ireland could start in this wee church, would I? Oh, yes, I would. Because if God wants it to start here, then it could start here, but we've got to want it too. Can we make a difference in the families that we live with, in the homes that we're in, in the neighborhood where we live, in the community where God has placed us? Yes, we can, but we do need the double portion to do it, and we've got to be determined about the distance that we are from our God. Two boys were talking about their Sunday school lesson, which happened to be about Elijah's ascent in the chariot of fire. One wee lad said to the other, would you not be afraid to ride in the chariot, mate? And the other replied, well, it all depends who's driving the chariot. (laughs) Have you got it this morning? Who's driving your chariot? Hmm? Who's driving your chariot? Is it you? Or have you got so close to Jesus that he's in the pilot's seat? Remember years ago, and I heard it on the radio and I thought, that would have been a great name for a gospel group. It was a secular group, unfortunately, but the name of the band was God is My Co-Pilot. And I thought, I'd have loved to have a a quartet or a a gospel band and called it God is My Co-Pilot. Come on, who's in the chariot with you today? Are you close enough? close enough that the other driver in your chariot is the Lord himself. If God's driving the chariot, then everything's good. Because no matter where it goes, if God's in the chariot with you, everything's going to be all right. Singers, musicians, you can come. I go back to our little song. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. If we can truly stand and sing that song at some future point, then we'll have determined that we're staying close. We'll have determined our distance from Jesus. We'll have determined that we're not going to give up. And just like Elisha stuck like glue to Elijah before God took him, we'll stick like glue to the Savior whom we love and whom we serve. Come on, church, this morning. Will you go this week and take another look at your distance from Jesus? Take a look at your distance from Jesus and then make up your mind. If you have to do something to get closer, do it. And let Jesus get in your chariot with you. Thank you for listening. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you that you always want to be close to us. Let us, we're the ones who pull away or walk away or turn our face from you. But we know if we're willing, like Elisha was with Elijah, to stay close, to be determined never to walk away, to get as close to you as we possibly can, that your blessing, your love, your mercy, your grace always will be pouring out upon us because you're a God, a loving Heavenly Father who wants to bless his children. Lord, will you help us to determine our distance in such a way 
that we get as close to you as we possibly can. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, church. A Roman cross you carry A borrowed tomb left empty Your spirit now within me Oh, what a Once I was there